All right, today we're gonna to be talking about A Room of One Zone by Virginia Woolf. This is a nonfiction essay based on a series of uh, talks that she gave at women's colleges in the late 20s about the subject of women and fiction. And this is actually my very first Virginia Woolf. And this was really good, I liked it a lot. Yeah, her nonfiction work seemed like a good place to start. Virginia Woolf's fiction is characterized by her stream of consciousness writing style, which can be difficult to get into. Yeah, back in 06, William Faulkner and I had a pretty serious disagreement about stream of consciousness writing, and I have not picked up another work of stream of consciousness since. Which I should, and I will eventually, but that is not what we're talking about today. So in this work, Virginia Woolf posits that the reason that there have not been nearly as many great women writers as there have been writers is basically because women have historically had very limited social and economic power. And that for women to be great fiction writers, they need 500 pounds a year and a room of their own with a lock on the door in which to write. And I would say that, yeah, overall, I agree with her on that. Historically, women have been stuck at home, raising children, tending to the household. It wasn't until maybe the early 1800s that they were even allowed to actually own property, and they were basically possessions of their husbands. I mean, if you look at the conditions that Jane Austen was writing in, the fact that she managed to write one novel, much less six, and that they were all really, really good is kind of a miracle. And she was unmarried and had no children, so she didn't even have the worst of it. What really struck me about A Room of One's Own is how incredibly relevant it still is. I mean, we've certainly made great strides in the 90-odd years since Virginia Woolf said these things, but I mean, studies have shown that in two-parent households where both parents work, the wife still ends up doing most of the child-rearing. Like, we've made progress here, but we're not out of the woods yet. There were a couple of points where I did not agree with her. Her whole argument is pretty classist which I have decided to chalk up to it was a different time. Well, you know, it's still present and kind of hard to ignore. And she also talks about how women's writing has this undercurrent of anger to it often, which she says makes it much weaker. And that as, as a woman, you need to learn to just stamp that out to make your writing better. And I'm kind of just like, mm, yeah. I think those women had every right to be really fucking angry. But overall, I think it's really good and really worth reading. Uh, it's very quick to get through. It's only a little over 100 pages. And in some ways, it was actually really fun. Like, Virginia Woolf is actually really funny, which I did not expect at all. I mean, she did end up drowning herself, so that's not really the sort of life that I would associate with humor, but there are definitely some parts in here that are really genuinely funny. She just has this really great dry wit, and I like it a lot. So yes, I would definitely recommend this, particularly if you are wanting to read more stuff written by women, and I personally will be reading some more Virginia Woolf, because I like her, even if stream of consciousness scares me a little. Alright, that is it for me. I will see you soon. Bye.